the APHA ASB Council Delegate Chapter Delegate Orientation Webinar. So it's about 9 o'clock here on the East Coast, and we are excited to have about 150 people on this tonight's webinar in order to get oriented towards the chapter delegate process. It is uh, oftentimes the APHA ASB House of Delegates can be understood as a, a foreign world, but hopefully we are going to dispel some rumors and clarify a number of things for everyone tonight. We have a lot of information to get through, so let's get started. Tonight's webinar procedures uh, are going to start off uh, with how to orient your audio. Uh, you can either use your telephone by clicking the Use Telephone and dialing that phone number, or you can use the mic and speakers that are built into your computer. Either way, we ask you to mute your telephone or your microphone in order to be respectful to others. And you can, we will unmute you, or you can unmute yourself if you have a question uh, to, to ask. Um, over the, the microphone. You can also submit your question in the questions box. Uh, and that can, those questions can, can be submitted throughout the presentation or during the question and answer session. But I highly encourage you to go ahead and submit your questions now because we have both Keith and Lucy Ann in the background that are waiting to answer those questions. So we all have to wait until the very end for the question and answer portion. But well, we ask you to submit those questions so we can make sure everyone is clear on everything. And if a question can be addressed to the audience, we can certainly make sure that everyone understands the answer to it. So the, tonight's agenda will consist of uh, a basic overview of the role of the APHA House of Delegates, your role as a chapter delegate, and the APHA ASD policy events for annual meetings. We'll also conduct an overview of Robert's Rules of Order, including voting, amendments, call of the previous questions, and other helpful tips. We'll also give some general procedures and activities and tips to make sure that the time that you spend in the House of Delegates as a delegate works smoothly and you enjoy the process and you're able to really engage the rest of your chapter throughout that. Then we'll pull in the Policy Standing Committee to and conduct a mock resolution debate trip for debate. And then we will also pull in the National Executive Committee for the mock elections debate. Uh, we will have a time for questions at the very end of the presentation. And uh, hopefully, we will have ample time at the end as we breeze through all of this information. So again, I will mention now the webinar is being recorded. And it will be posted by March 16th on the House of Delegates website, which that link will be provided throughout the presentation. But I encourage you, if you miss a few details, or if you um, if you misheard anything, to check the, the recording or with any of your fellow delegates in order to make sure that all of your questions are answered. But before we get started for this, this evening, we want to do a practice poll question. So we have less than 15 days from San Diego. And I would like to know, have you started packing yet? So option one, no, haven't even thought about it. Two, well, kind of, but I still need to go shopping. Number three, yes, but but only a small amount is packed. And for totes, I am completely packed and ready to go. So we'll turn it over to Keith to start our poll, and we'll have about 15 to 30 seconds to conduct that poll. So we'll give it about five more seconds. And put in those last few answers. And we'll ask Keith for the final answers on our first practice poll question. All right, Lauren. So it looks about 64% of you haven't even thought about packing yet, followed by 22% that still need to go shopping. And then uh, 12 and 2 that you guys can see there, that only a small, packed, um, small number of packed there. Well, 64% that have, have not gotten, not even thought about it yet, I hope that we, you begin to think about it, um, as it is only 15 days away. And, um, and with this webinar, we hope you start to think about your time at the chapter delegate and what you'll need in the house so you can begin to pack. So your role, of the house, or rather, the role of the House of Delegates 
in the academy here is really to um, to go through and represent the voice of student pharmacists. So the the review of the delegate materials we had all of those delegate materials we provided prior to in electronic format or via the House of Delegates website, as well as on site printed and on uh, and available to you as you check in with the credentials committee. In that packet, you'll find the proposed resolution that we will be voting on, that there will be four this year. You also have a copy of the resolutions book or the policy book, which chronicles all of the past, past resolutions that have gone through since 1974 all the way through to uh, just this past year. You'll also get a House of Delegates guide, a House of Delegates rules and procedure, and the agenda. And again, all of those are available uh, prior to an electronic format. We also encourage you to look at the how do I approach the mic, simply because that is uh, oftentimes a bit of um, in, a very much an intimidating element that we encourage you to review that in order to overcome that, uh, that bit of intimidation on how to exactly approach the mic and really begin to, to voice your opinion. The Roberts Rules of Order Cheat Sheet. The Roberts Rules of Order, uh, the book itself is about a thousand pages, so we have distilled it down to a cheat sheet for you so that you can easily use it throughout the House Delegates process. We also will be providing the new business item forms as well as the mock debate script just in case you have any questions and you can come back to a script that's already laid out for you. I encourage you to look at the resources that have been highlighted in the orange there, the APHA ASB House Delegates page, which I've mentioned a few times already. That link is provided there at pharmacist.com slash APHA House Delegates as well as the APHA 2015 annual meeting website. That website not only includes uh, information about the House of Delegates, but it also includes information for about the entire meeting. So you can begin to plan exactly what you're doing at APHA 2015. So your role as a delegate is to serve as your chapter's representative. You're going to express your con the concerns and opinions of your chapters and really be, have the opportunity to speak on behalf of yourself. So you will also be able to submit new business items. And in this process, we encourage you to be an active participant. You are, in a sense, a, a vital element in stewarding ideas from the chapter level all the way up to the Board of Trustees. You are a key element as those move through the APHA ASB policy process. So we encourage you to have fun and be an active participant in the policy process. But first things first, we're going to need you to sign up online as your chapter's delegate. You're going to need to complete the chapter delegate and alternate delegate credentials form online. This is best completed prior to annual meeting. The forms are going to be due uh, by fri or, excuse me, on March 20th, on that Friday. And that form can be found on the APHA House of Delegates page on the APHA 2015 annual meeting website, as well as on the forum site there. Again, this, it's best to have this completed prior to the meeting, but we do understand that there are some extenuating circumstances, such as travel that uh, ultimately cause a, de a delegate to not arrive on time or possibly not be there at all. And, and in those extenuating circumstances, that form can be completed um, again, and then the changes can be made. But for the bulk of the chapters that are uh, that are going through this process, we need you to complete the chapter delegate and alternate delegate credentials form online by March 20th. So we have another poll question for you now that you're all practiced up. How many years have you served as an APHA ASB chapter delegate and the APHA ASB House of Delegates? So number one, first year, number two, second year, third year, fourth year, and so forth. So keep let's open the poll and see how many experienced delegates we have in here and how many first timers we have. So we'll give it another five seconds. Waiting for those final few to come in. And we'll go ahead and close the poll, see how many delegates we have here. Keith, what are our relations? Sure. So an overwhelming 83% that this is the first year 
uh, for our delegates, followed by 17% that said they're coming back for a second year. Uh, there are no third, fourth, or more than four years. Well, that's exciting. We have quite a green bunch here, but hopefully we have all of the information they need on this webinar and um, all of the information on the House of Delegates website in order to make sure you all are set for your first time in the APHAAC House of Delegates. So the APHA policy process timeline at annual is, can be summed up in this uh, nice flow chart that we have here. Starting on Saturday, March 28th, you have the new business items that are due at 8.30 a.m. You have the open hearing on proposed resolutions and new business, and that will be the first opportunity at annual meeting for you all to discuss the uh, open, to, excuse me, to discuss the proposed resolutions. The reference committee will then meet after that open hearing on proposed resolutions and the new business items in order to make recommendations to the House of Delegates about what exactly the House of Delegates should vote on. Sunday uh, is encompassed by the reference committee report that will be issued uh, later that, excuse me, later in the morning. And you also have the House of Delegates first session. So that's where you all will sit for your very first session and um, and be engaged in the APHA ASP House of Delegates for the first time. And then we'll go to Monday where you will be in the House of Delegates final session and the national officer election. So the next few slides will break these items down uh, and give a few more details about each of those. So the open hearing that we mentioned is held on Saturday at, from 5 to 6.15 in uh, the convention center room 6A. And once we get there, I encourage you to find those convention rooms prior to uh, getting into the hectic schedule so you know exactly where to go and you're not late to those these particular sessions. But this particular session, the open hearing, is an open microphone. So all student pharmacists, pharmacists members, and even non-members have the opportunity to voice their opinion on the new business item and the proposed resolution. So this is your opportunity to let your voice be heard. Again, you can speak on behalf of your chapter. You can speak on behalf of yourself. Your fellow chapter members can speak up for their chapter, or they can speak on behalf of their cells. Either way, this is an open hearing. Again, very much implied in the title that all individuals can come and voice their opinion on the proposed resolution. Next, you have the APHA ASC Reference Committee, where all of the, uh, which is consisting of the eight regional members at large and chaired by myself, the APHA ASC Speaker of the House. I mean, we meet in a closed session on Saturday evening to discuss all of the comments that came from that open hearing. We make recommendations to the APHA ASB House of Delegates for adoption of the resolution, rejection of the resolution, adoption of the resolution as amended, or referral of the resolution to the National Executive Committee. All of these reports are compiled and, uh, and then it posted online uh, by Saturday at 10 p.m. on the meeting website or the APHA, excuse me, and the APHA House Delegates website. Then you have the APHA ASP New Business Review Committee. This, is, this committee is comprised of eight regional representatives, a chair and an ex officiato, excuse me, ex officio chair of, that are appointed by the APHA ASP National Executive Committee. So we meet in a closed session uh, on Saturday evening to discuss those comments that were made on the open hearing on the, uh, the new business items, similar to how the reference committee made, uh, excuse me, discussed the comments that were made on the reference on the open in the open hearing on the proposed resolution. We make similar recommendations about the adoption, rejection, adoption as amended, or referral uh, of the new business items to the NEC. Again, these reports, similar to the Reference Committee, are going to be available by Saturday at 10 p.m. on the meeting website or at the APHA ASC House of Delegates webpage. New business items. What exactly are new business items? They are items that have not gone through the, uh, the traditional role of the APHA ASC pro policy process where it goes from where a, an idea works its way from MRM through the Resolutions Committee, and then finally to be presented to here at annual meeting. These ideas are those that have come about in between and that have that you and your chapter field have merit and need to be discussed by the APHA ASB House of Delegates. All of these new business items must be filed at least 48 hours before March 30th, 
Monday, March 30th at 8.30 p.m. And that will be the final session for the House of Delegates. We ask you to submit to that new business item on the new business item form to the APHAAFC Speaker of the House via email no later than that Saturday, March 28th at 8.30 a.m. The new business item forms can be found on the APHA ASC House of Delegates webpage. And we ask you to bring an electronic copy to the stage at 415 just in case, just to make sure that we have received the new business item and that everything is in line in order to be discussed. So a few of the ground rules for the APHA House of Delegates. We ask uh, all chapter members to be present, to, must be present to vote. Um, only chapter delegates are allowed to debate or speak in the House of Delegates, and only chapter members are able to vote on the proposed resolutions and new business items. The alternate, alternate delegates can serve in the place of the chapter delegate when needed, but they need, that alternate delegate, delegate will need to check in with the credentials committee table. The House of Delegates votes on the recommendations of the APHA ASP Reference Committee. They do not necessarily vote on the proposed resolutions themselves, but again, the recommendations of the Reference Committee. So what's going to happen in the first session of the APHA ASP House of Delegates? You're going to have, it will be held on Sunday uh, from 2.30 to 5.30 p.m. And re registration for you delegates will begin at 2 p.m. And we'll ask you to be seated by no later than 2.25 p.m. And that's so that we can begin on time at the 2.30 start. Charter, uh, we will charter new chapters and vote on academy business. We'll also vote for the Farm Flick video, con video contest awards and watch a few of those uh, while we have a few breaks. We'll also hear from Nick Capote uh, in his final national president's uh, address. And we'll hear updates from the Government Affairs and the APHA ASC Standing Committee. And we'll also debate and vote on the proposed resolutions. So you can generalize, generally think of the first session of where we will vote on the proposed resolution. You'll see in just a second what, how that contrasts to the final session. The final session is held on Monday, March 30th from 8.30 a.m. to, to 12 p.m. We will vote on the remaining resolution, excuse me, remaining proposed resolutions and new business items if there is any overlap or if we do not get all the business done in the previous session. We'll also hear from up, more updates from the APHA ASB standing committees. And we'll hear from Lucy Ann West in her, in her presidential or inaugural presidential address. We will recognize our Good Government Student Pharmacist of the Year Award and elect the 2015 and 2016 National Executive Committee. So as I mentioned, the first session is to vote on the proposed resolution, and the final session is to, vote, is to elect the new National Executive Committee. So we covered quite a bit of information pretty quickly. And so at this point, I'll open it up for a few questions, which I have no doubt that there are a number of questions coming in. So, Lucianne and, and Keith, how have our questions been coming in? Are there any that we need to address for the entire audience? Uh, we just needed one, one bit of clarification. Um, so in the House of Delegates, um, one of the questions is, is it a closed session? And um, the answer is no. Um, we usually have uh, anywhere from 1,800 to 2,300 attendees sitting in the audience. It's only the portion that's in the front of the room, in front of the stage, where um, the delegates will be seated. And uh, we usually have um, three to four rows um, of delegates kind of seated in three different segments. And the way that we'll have it set up is um, on uh, Sunday, we'll start with Region 1 and Albany College of Pharmacy, which is the first school. It'll kind of be all the way on stage right. And then we'll list all of the regions kind of in alphabetical order with Region 1 all the way through Region 8. So in the far right corner will be Western University uh, in Region 8. And then on Monday morning, what we'll do is we'll kind of flip-flop that around. So um, Western University in Region 8 will be in the upper uh, right-hand corner on stage right. And then Albany College Pharmacy will be in the back corner. So we'll give you guys a little bit of a different perspective. but. Um, only those who are chapter delegates who have a red delegate ribbon will be able to address the House, 
will be able to vote, uh, as well as kind of um, work within the proceedings and the rules uh, under Robert's Rules of Order. Um, anything beyond the rope and stanchions uh, will be attendees, and we encourage everybody to attend. Um, it really is an interesting session. So one of the questions that we have um, from uh, from one of the students is, um, should we ideally be meeting with our chapters before annual meeting and discussing each resolution's farm fix video and how our chapter wants to vote, or will there will be time during annual meeting? Lauren, why don't you take this question as a uh, member of the resolutions committee and somebody who's been announced delegate for the past couple of years. Thank you, Keith. So I, I would certainly encourage you to get in touch with your chapter and meet with your chapter prior to annual. Um, a lot of a lot of uh, a lot of discussion happens at annual meeting, but take some time prior to annual meeting in order to sit down and really get an idea of where everybody's head is prior to um, prior to hearing all of the discussion that happens at annual meeting. So um, uh, in in the years past, uh, our my chapter has um, has come together and agreed upon a, a general vote for our delegates to go forward with, but that that vote has often been shifted by what has been heard in the open hearing. A lot of chapter members feel differently after they hear what exactly um, has been said in the open hearing. Maybe there uh, is a bit of evidence that is that is presented that ultimately changes the opinion changes the opinion of uh, of a lot of chapter members. So I encourage you to both have a, a plan going forward as well as a moment set aside at annual meeting where you can discuss with your chapters to really confirm that everybody is still on board. Like I said earlier, this is a this is a process where we encourage you to get your chapter members involved. We want to know exactly what their opinions are and make sure that you are able to represent that opinion fairly and and um, and safely. So I encourage you to to really check in with your chapter members throughout the annual meeting, just in case they've had a discussion with somebody outside of the open hearing or heard something in the open hearing, to really see what um, what is their opinions are. Oftentimes, uh, we will grant um, caucuses throughout the process uh, or throughout the House of Delegates where you, as a delegate, will be able to go into the audience and visit your chapter and really feel and discuss with them what exactly was said in the House. Uh, how they're feeling exactly about an amendment made that was possibly proposed, or really the discussion that's going on. So again, it's a very dynamic process once uh, these resolutions and once everyone gets to annual meetings. So I encourage you to to really set aside some time to make sure you and your chapter are are staying up with one another about how you should vote. Great, great answer, Lauren. Um, there are a couple comments that it's very hard to hear you, Lauren. Um, so just make sure that okay. you're speaking loudly in your in front of your um, microphone or your phone there, uh, just so that everyone can hear you there. Um, questions had come up uh, in regards to where you can locate the proposals, uh, and I wanted to speak on one point that you mentioned during your um, during your comment there. Uh, if you go to the pharmacist.com slash APHA ASP House of Delegates page, um, on that page we not only have all of the proposed resolutions, um, but we also have uh, the background statements for the complete report of the resolutions committee. Um, your regional delegates worked very hard to not only put those resolutions together, but um, list their reasonings why, um, and there's a lot of great information inside those reports. Um, in addition, in that same section with the House of Delegates reports, there is a PowerPoint presentation that's already been developed. It's on the annual meeting slide deck um, that has each of the proposed resolutions on it, um, so you can just plug and play, use that during your chapter meetings, and um, use that as a point to kind of spark some debate um, within your chapter to see how everyone wants to vote. Um, in addition, on that page there, we've got information on your registration and orientation. Um, there's the new business forms, as well as the agenda for the entire house. We have the links to all of the nominees for the FarmFlex video contest, so I highly encourage you to view that before you get to annual meeting. And then um, there's also chapter delegate materials. So, we're going to try to go as green as we can. Um, we are going to provide you with a packet. Included in that packet is an agenda, the list of the FarmFlex nominees, um, as well as um, two cheat sheets. One of them is on Robert's Rules, and the other one's just a kind of a quick overview of the House of Delegates. Um, but beyond that, we're not going to provide too much this year uh, in regards to um, paper. Uh, if you want a policy book, um, that's actually on that House of Delegates page as well. 
I encourage you to download that to your laptop or your tablet um, so you can have that with you. But it's just not really cost effective to keep printing out 100 pieces of paper for students when the majority of the time we don't use them anyways. Um, but uh, really use that page as a resource and um, let us know if you have questions or can't download something along that line. Another question we had from a student is, is there a limit on how many delegates each chapter can have in the house? If so, what's that limit? Um, so Ashley, the answer to your question is, is each chapter is allowed one delegate. Um, and this is one delegate per accreditation. So for instance, the University of Florida has four campuses. Unfortunately, the University of Florida does not have four votes or four delegates in the House of Delegates. They only get one delegate. Um, and so we, we do that for, for all those schools that have satellite campuses or multiple campuses. Um, you have to pick and choose which you know, campus is maybe going to represent you this year, or maybe you'll split it up between the first session and the final session um, to kind of go between those campuses. But it's only one delegate in there. Um, when you go to check in uh, on Sunday, we need to check in about a half an hour early. Uh, you'll go meet our credentials committee. You'll actually provide them with either a credit card or a license. Um, and we'll use that as collateral against us giving you our um, automated response system, our little keypad, so that you guys can vote during the session. Uh, we want to make sure that we get those keypads back. So when you turn that back in, we'll give you your license or credit card back. Um, but when you do come, you'll actually receive your red delegate ribbon. And that'll signify you as the uh, representative from your chapter. And then you'll just take your seat there. So uh, one delegate uh, is in there. Um, one of the questions that we have is, can a chapter win more than one category in FarmFlix? Unfortunately, no. Uh, we do have the three categories there. There's most humorous, most informative, as well as best picture. Um, if you win one of those categories, usually best picture is the, is the most coveted one, so that, that'll be the highest award. If you win best picture, you can't win most humorous or most informative. We kind of spread, uh, spread the wealth there. And that question was asked by uh, Jennifer Nisus. Um, that kind of rounds out the questions that we have here uh, for um, this round here. Um, Lauren, we'll turn it back over to you if you want to start uh, with the next section of the report. And uh, I'll let you know if you have further questions. Very good. Just so everyone is aware, we did, uh, Luzanne did add the House of Delegates web page into the chat box. So everyone can follow that link and follow all of the, and find all of the resources that Keith was talking about just there. Um, again, that page is packed full of everything that any delegate would ever need for the APHA ASD House of Delegates. If you're not able to find anything on there, we are certainly able to uh, create that or help you find it. So uh, we'll get you some of the email addresses and contact information more towards the end. But again, I encourage you to look at that page and find anything and everything a delegate would ever need. So our stepping, our stepping into the next section here, the Roberts Rules of Order, a brief, excuse me, Roberts Rules of Order brief overview. The entire intention of Roberts Rules of Order is not to make it inconvenient and not to make it a slow process, but to maintain order throughout the entire process. Ensure, ensure everyone who wants to speak can speak, and make sure that a, a minority does have a voice and is able to say exactly what they have to say um, without being drowned out by a majority. The adopted version of the APHA ASD House of Delegates, um, uh, and, excuse me, the, there is an adopted version in the APHA ASD House of Delegates Rules of Procedure. And we've really adopted that and adapted that in order to make sure it works for our 134 delegates and uh, the other guests in the, in the House of Delegates. It does also, we also do conduct a roll call uh, there at the beginning, and that will be conducted via a, an electronic format so we can make sure everybody is there. And we also do have the correct verbiage for approaching the microphone, making amendments, and ending debate. So again, in that Robert's Rules of Order, you do not need to go buy the book and or read a 1,000 pages prior to annual, annual meeting. You'll just need to check out the brief overview that we provided on the APHA House Delegates website. So approaching the microphone, you'll need to wait to be acknowledged, and you'll say something like this. Mr. Speaker, Lauren Kirk from East Tennessee State University, speaking on behalf of myself, my chapter rises in support of this re resolution because, or you can simplify it to say, I rise in support of this resolution. Or you can say, my chapter rises in opposition to this resolution because. So either way, we encourage you to be brief in order to make sure everyone has a chance to speak. 
I also encourage you uh, to have what you're thinking about saying either written out or shortly noted in order to, so that you have a point of reference. Oftentimes, uh, it can be an intimidating process to approach the mic, and we want to make sure that you have exactly what you want to say written down and ready to convey to the entire House of Delegates. We'll, see, we'll ask you to see handout for further information on how to approach the microphone, because there are a few more nuances to it. We encourage you to check out the Robert's Rules of Order um, guide there. The voting. So all of the major points, the bullet points that are noted here are motions uh, that you can make within the House. You have a voice vote, uh, and that will be conducted by on resolution, suspending House rules, and a call to the previous question. You can verify a voice vote uh, if it's unclear to you, or uh, if you believe I have made the wrong call on the yay or nay by uh, yelling division. And that can be done from your seat. You do not have to approach a microphone in order to yell division. I encourage you to also think about the that, that we will be spread out over quite a bit of space. And what you all are able to hear and what I am able to hear at the podium will be different. So if you do hear something different, please do uh, feel free to call division. Uh, and we will move to an electronic vote which will be the main form of voting for the elections, and it will clarify any divisions that come about. So we'll second, seconding a motion, excuse me, second motion, you'll be able to call second from your seat. Again, that is, uh, that second can be called from a seat. The majority of votes uh, will be most of the time, uh, but although there are exceptions where a two-thirds majority vote is required, and the two instances that are most pertinent to us are the suspending house rule and the call to the previous question. So amendments. What exactly are amendments? They are changes to the wording of a resolution. And many instances they can, and many instances they, uh, many instances they do not change the intent of the resolution. Um, in order to conduct or, excuse me, put forth an amendment, we'll ask you to fill out an amendment form and turn it into staff early on Sunday or Monday. Either way, if those session, those amendments will be due prior to the prior to the start of the House of Delegates. And amendments will again will aim to hand those forms in before the session. It just makes it a lot easier on staff um, to hand those in uh, before the session rather than during the session because staff is normally working to make sure that the House of Delegates is flowing smoothly for us. So, but we understand there are moments where uh, amendments do need to be put forth in, in the middle of the House delegates. And so, again, that amendment form will be provided in your packet or available online in order for you to complete uh, during the House of Delegates process. So, putting forth an amendment, you will say something like, Mr. Seeger, Lauren Kirk from East Tennessee State University, I move to suspend House rules for the purpose of an amendment. At this point, it requires a second. And like we mentioned earlier, a second can be called by a fellow delegate or another delegate, excuse me, from, the, from their seat. So suspending those rules in order to consider a resolution does require a two-thirds vote. If the motion passes, then the debate and you, the House then debates and votes on the amendment. If the amendment passes, then the debate and the vote, then the House debates and votes on the original resolution as amended. Oftentimes, we look at the amendment process as building a house. You have the original motion that, um, that is considered by the house, and uh, a delegate puts forth a, a, an amendment. At that point, the amendment then has to uh, go through a two-thirds vote uh, to suspend house rule, and then uh, then the House will then debate that in order to consider that amendment. If another amendment, or excuse me, if that primary amendment is, may, is passed, then a secondary amendment can be made. But that secondary amendment has to include the word, the verbiage of that primary amendment and the original motion. So again, working up the, the to build the House before we get up to the teal roof there, all built on that original motion. So again, I encourage you to visualize the amendment process as, an, as a house, all based on the original motion 
then going through the process to have a primary amendment pass and, and then move on to the secondary amendment in order to cap it off. So ending debate. Oftentimes, debate can uh, carry on for some time, and, uh, and oftentimes some delegates can begin to repeat themselves. So we encourage you to be cognizant of exactly the flow of the House. And if debate does seem like to you it has gone on too long, we encourage you to step forward and end debate. Uh, you will do this by saying, Mr. Speaker, Lauren Kirk from East Tennessee State University, I move to call the previous question. That requires a second, and it also requires um, a two-thirds vote in order to end debate. So again, if the rest of the House does not feel that uh, the debate needs to end or that valuable input is going to be added by continuing debate, then that, to, that um, motion to call the previous question could be voted down. So again, a two-thirds vote is required to call the previous question, and that, must be, that motion must be made at a microphone. It stops the vote, stops the debate, and leads to an immediate vote on the debating the resolution that is being debated. So, other helpful tips: to request a caucus. Uh, this is this is a very common thing in order to really touch it, touch base with your your chapter in order to see how they're think how they are thinking after all the debate that has occurred within the house. You would say something to the effect of, "Mr. Speaker, Lauren Kirk." from East Tennessee State University, I would like to request a two-minute caucus. At that point, depending on the flow and the timeliness of our uh, activities as a house prior to this point, we will consider a two-minute caucus and oftentimes grant that two-minute caucus for you to touch base and really discuss with your chapter what exactly uh, and how they're feeling about the proposed resolution. You can also request info or protest the rules. And that will be done from the microphone by saying, I rise to a point of information or I rise to a point of order. At that point, information will be provided in your specific question and requests will be addressed. So again, there are quite a few resources available on the APHA ASB House of Delegates website. They include the APHA ASB rules of order, excuse me, the Roberts rules of order cheat sheet and the APHA ASP House of Delegates Guide. All of, these, uh, all of these I encourage you to study, and I implore you to study in order to make sure that you are there to facilitate your chapter's engagement. Your chapter is, is, has put you in this position and has really sent you forward as their representative, and it is your responsibility to represent them fairly and appropriately. So it's also your responsibility to engage them and keep them active in the process of what's going on in the House and really engaged in and following what it exactly is moving forward in the House. So we have a poll question here for you to test your knowledge on all of the information I just went over pretty quickly. So as a chapter delegate, what can you call from your chair? First option is A, call the previous question, B, division, C, second, or number option four, A and B, or option five, B and C. So we'll go ahead and open it up here and see what Keith's got for us. All right, we'll get a bit, uh, about five more seconds here. And we'll close the poll. What do we got, Keith? So it looks like everybody's pretty smart. 87% um, um, showed that you can call a division or you can call a second from your chair. Uh, we had 5%, 2%, 3%, 2% 2%, uh, for the other uh, four questions there. So everybody pretty much got it right. Um, when you want to call the previous question, uh, to end debate, which that means, um, you actually have to get up, stand in line at the microphone. Uh, and make sure that um, you haven't been called uh, out of turn uh, before you can call the previous question there. But uh, great job, everybody. Excellent work. I, I'm very pleased to see that even though we reviewed all that information pretty quickly, that everyone got it there. So we have another poll question. 
during what APHA ASB House of Delegates session will we vote for the Farm Flicks Award? Will that be on Sunday during the first session or Monday during the final session? So we'll give it about 15 more seconds. And five more seconds. What do we have, Keith? All right, so this one's a, a little bit closer than we've had in the past here. Um, Sunday for 62% and 38 for Monday. And unfortunately, but your answer is Sunday. Uh, we're going to vote for FarmFlix on Sunday afternoon. Uh, the reason is uh, we will announce the winners of the FarmFlix Award uh, for those best picture, most humorous, and most informative awards during the award celebration on Sunday night. So just a little bit later that evening, we will actually make the announcement for those awards. So we have to do it on Sunday as opposed to Monday. So um, good try, everybody. So the APHA or the agenda for our House Delegates is available on the APHA House Delegates website, and I encourage you all to look at that and check out all of the stuff that we'll be doing on Sunday and all of the stuff that we'll be doing on Monday. At this time, we will welcome our Policy Standing Committee. They have been active all hey, year. Hey, Lauren, Lauren well, yeah. why don't we go through some questions real quick? Cause you just kind of went through a lot of heavy information in regards to the policy process, uh, as well as Robert's rules and kind of conducting business in the House there. Um, why don't we take some questions from the audience um, before we move forward? All right. What questions do we have? Well, I want to open it up here. We had we had a couple people who had their hands raised um, during the session. Um, if you still have your questions, please, please, please let us know, um, and we'll try to get to you as best as possible. Um, in addition, during this time while we kind of received some questions, Lauren, um, your your um, slide is actually stuck on the poll question for chapter delegate. So why don't you um, back out and then back back in there while we kind of get some questions so that we can get that reset. Are we on the proposed resolutions now? No. No, you're still on the chapter delegate. What do you need to do from your call from your chair? How about now? Unfortunately, you have to back out and then uh, go back in. So one of the questions is in um, regards to the APHA ASP amendment form. Um, it, the question actually is from a great student pharmacist here. Uh, could you please explain how to fill out the amendment form? What do we need to do correctly on it? Um, this is actually one of the um, more difficult things um, that we encounter as APHA student development staff. Um, our day on Sunday is made or break, uh, broken by um, how well uh, the amendment forms are completed. Um, first things first, you need to make sure that you write neatly and clearly. Um, the amendment forms are actually triplicate forms. There's a, a white copy, which is the top copy. Uh, there's a pink copy and then a yellow copy. By the time that it gets down to that yellow and pink copy, it's a little bit harder to read, but unfortunately, those are your copies. Uh, the white one goes to us, um, the, the next one goes to, uh, the yellow one goes to the uh, speaker, and then the last one stays with you guys. Um, so you need to make sure that you use a ballpoint pen and you push down very, very hard uh, with your amendment form. Um, when you are completing the amendment, you need to write out the entire policy. Um, so you'll notice on several of our policies, um, and let's just you know take 20, uh, 2015, uh, 2015.1, uh, it's got a couple different points. If you only want to make an amendment to the first point, you just write 2015.1, and then you write out the policy um, as is. And then, so if you'd like to make an amendment to that, um, or if you want to delete something, to delete something, you'll actually cross the text out. If you want to add something in, what you'll do is you'll write it in, but then you'll also underline it. So the student development staff member knows exactly what uh, you are referring to uh, in the amendment. Um, if if the policy is quite long and, and 
you know, it's kind of drawn out uh, as a couple of them are, are. You can you can write dot dot dot, and then start at the beginning of the sentence that um, that's there. Um, honestly, you know, we we like to have everything written out, but if it's a little if you're a little short of time, you can kind of do that. But you need to clearly cross out and then underline the the new text in there. Otherwise, it, it makes it really difficult for us to uh, to to know it's what uh, you do want changed with that. So. Um, a couple questions here about uh, relations, about collaborating with other chapters. Um, we highly, highly, highly encourage you guys to collaborate with other um, schools, other schools in your region, um, other schools across the nation, um, to kind of debate as well as find out what they think about the issues. Um, you're going to find out a lot of information during that open hearing on proposed resolutions and new business on Saturday evening. Um, you're going to, as Lauren said earlier, spend a little bit of time with some of your core um, executive committee members and as well as your chapter members to really decide on how you want to vote based upon some of the comments and discussion that was um, brought forward during that, that session there. Um, because that reference committee, um, they're going to do a great job in making sure that all of the comments are um, kind of placed into queue and, and make sure that we, we have some good uh, recommendations for you guys based upon the, the discussion that happened during that, uh, that um, uh, open hearing time there. So. Um, I think that's it for questions that we have here. Uh, Lauren, why don't we run through the mock proposed resolution script. Uh, just as a point, I emailed that to everybody who registered for the meeting this evening. Uh, and then I just posted the link here in the chat function. So if everybody wants to um, grab that script and read along with our policy standing committee as well as our national executive committee members, you can do that. Um, it'll help uh, make sense of everything that Lauren kind of talked about earlier there. Go ahead, Lauren. It looks like your slides are up. Excellent. I apologize for the technical difficulties there. We will blame them on Keith for somehow mixing it up for me. Thanks, Keith. Uh, so at this point, we will move into the mock proposed resolution script. And we'll welcome our policy standing committee. So I encourage them to unmute themselves. We'll welcome Valerie on mic one. We'll welcome Dylan Jones, the vice chair of the policy standing committee, as delegate number one. We'll have Sierra Schmidt as the Mike Two, Lucy Ann West as Delegate Two, and Sarah Reg as Mike Three. So again, as Keith mentioned, you all were emailed this script, and we'll get started uh, at the top of the script. So on the screen there, APHA ASP recommends that, recommends that pharmacists wear lab coats in the pharmacy practice setting. Is there any debate on the reference committee's recommendation? Microphone number one. Mr. Speaker, my name is Valerie Buttinger from The Ohio State University. I would like to suspend House rules for the purpose of an amendment. Does staff have your wording? Yes. Please read the resolution with your proposed amendment. APHA ASP recommends that only pharmacists wear lab coats in the pharmacy practice setting. Is there a second? Second. Before we vote to suspend house rules, you may state your reasons for the amendment. My chapter feels that most healthcare professionals wear lab coats in the professional setting, but we want to make sure that our patients can differentiate the technicians and clerks in a pharmacy from the pharmacist. For the purpose of directing medication-related questions, so only pharmacists should wear lab coats. So in order to suspend house rules for the purpose of an amendment, a two-thirds majority vote is, is needed. All in favor of the motion to suspend house rules for the purpose of an amendment, please signify by saying aye. 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 All opposed, please signify by saying nay. The ayes have it. There, is there any debate on the proposed resolution? Microphone number two. Mr. Speaker, my name is Sierra Schmidt from Auburn University. I'd like to suspend House rules for the purpose of an amendment. Because House rules have already been suspended, it is not necessary to, to suspend House rules again for the purpose of a secondary amendment. Sorry, Mr. Speaker. Then I would like to propose a secondary amendment. Does staff have your wording? No. Please read the resolution with your proposed secondary amendment allowed so staff can, can add your wording. APHA ASP recommends that only pharmacists and student pharmacists wear lab coats in a pharmacy practice setting. 
Now that it's on the screen, is, is there a second? Second. Thank you. You may now state your reasons for a secondary amendment. My chapter feels that student pharmacists are professionals as well and should carry similar responsibilities as pharmacists since we are all pharmacists in training. Therefore, we should also be recognized by the distinction of wearing lab coats in our practice settings. In order to discuss the secondary amendment, a majority vote is needed. All in favor of opening discussion on the secondary amendment, please signify by saying aye. 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 All opposed, please signify by saying nay. The ayes have it. Is there any debate on the secondary amendment? Microphone number three. Mr. Speaker, I'm concerned about... Microphone number three, could you please state your name and school or college of pharmacy? I apologize, Mr. Speaker. Sarah Reed from Palm Beach Atlantic University. I think that we should wear these coats in the pharmacy, but I don't wear a lab coat like I wore in chemistry lab. I want to clarify that these are the professional white coats. Therefore, I would like to suspend house rules for the purpose of an amendment. I'm sorry, Ms. Reed. The motion is out of order. There are already two amendments on the floor. We must first address the amendment pending. However, you may propose an amendment after these motions have been addressed. Is there any further discussion regarding the statement on the screen? Seeing none, we will now vote on the secondary amendment as seen on the screen, which reads, APHA ASP recommends that only pharmacists and student pharmacists wear lab coats in a pharmacy practice setting. All in favor of the addition, excuse me, of the addition of the wording and student pharmacists, please signify by saying aye. 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 All opposed, please signify by saying nay. The ayes have it. The secondary amendment has been adopted. We will now return to discussion on the primary amendment, which now reads, APHA ASD recommends that only pharmacists and student pharmacists wear lab coats in a pharmacy practice setting. Is there any debate? Seeing none, all those in favor of the primary amendment, please signify by saying aye. 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 All those opposed, please say, signify by saying nay. The ayes have it. We will now be discussing the reference committee's recommendation to adopt the resolution. Is there any further debate? Microphone number three. Mr. Speaker, Sarah Reed from Palm Beach Atlantic University. I would like to suspend House rules for the purpose of an amendment. Does staff have your wording? Yes. Please read the resolution uh, with your proposed amendment. APHA ASP recommends that only pharmacists and student pharmacists wear white coats in a pharmacy practice setting. Is there a second? Second. Before we vote to suspend house rules, you may state your reasons for the amendment. My chapter feels that these coats should be specified as the professional type white coats, not the lab coats that many of us wore in chemistry labs in the past. Mr. Speaker. Point of order. Chapter delegate, you must be first be recognized by the speaker before beginning to speak. Microphone number one. I apologize, Mr. Speaker. Valerie Buttinger from The Ohio State University. I would like to request a caucus to discuss this with my chapter. I'm sorry. The motion to request a caucus is out of order at this time. We first need to vote on whether or not to suspend House rules for the purpose of an amendment. If House rules are suspended, the floor will be open to debate. After all delegates have had the op an opportunity to speak on the issue, a caucus will be granted if still necessary. In order to suspend House rules for the purpose of an amendment, a two-thirds majority vote is, is needed. All in favor of the motion to suspend House rules for the purpose of an amendment, please signify by saying aye. 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 All those opposed, please signify by saying nay. The ayes have it. Is there any discussion on the amendment? Microphone number two. Mr. Speaker, Sierra Schmidt from Auburn University. I think that this amendment is a really valid point, and my chapter is in support of this. 
Thank you. Is there any further debate? Microphone number one. Mr. Speaker, Valerie Buttinger from The Ohio State University. I would like to request a caucus to discuss this with my chapter. I will grant a two-minute caucus. Delegates, please return to your seats when you have finished discussing. The delegates at this point will consult with their chapters on the proposed wording. Two minutes later, the House will now come to order. Is there any further debate on the proposed amendment? Seeing none, we will now vote on the proposed amendment. All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 All those opposed, please signify by saying nay. 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 The ayes have it. Division. A division has been called. Please vote with your electronic devices. All in favor of the proposed amendment, amendment press 1. All those opposed to the proposed resolutions, press 2. Delegates, you have five, 15 seconds to vote, five seconds to vote, and voting is now closed. The electronic results will be posted on the, the screen. The amendment passes. We will now be discussing the reference committee's recommendation to adopt the resolution. Is there any, excuse me, is there any further discussion? Seeing none, we will now vote on the recommendation to adopt the resolution. All in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 All those opposed, please signify by saying nay. The ayes have it. The motion is carried. Any questions? So we very quickly went through a, a simulated debate on the proposed resolution. Does anyone at this point in the audience have a, any questions about that process? Seeing none, Keith, do we have any? Yeah, no, we don't have any questions or any hands raised here. Okay, seeing none, then we'll step into the elections overview. So in the final session, we will elect the 2015-2016 APHA AFC National Executive Committee. That NEC consists of a national president-elect, and that two national members at large, and an APHA AFC Speaker of the House. Opportunities to learn more about the candidates can be found uh, in these resources just here. You can go to the APHA uh, House of Delegates website. You can also attend the Meet the Candidate session just uh, around the times of the opening general session, the first House of Delegates session, and the final House of Delegates session. We will also be holding an APHA ASC open candidate review where you'll be able to view the candidate's video and ask questions from the audience. You'll also be able to learn more about the candidates in the House of Delegates. And I encourage you throughout this process to not only and meet these candidates yourself, but also send your chapter members to meet them as well. This is, these individuals, these five individuals, will be those individuals that represent you for the next year. So they have a vested interest in making sure that their vote and their opinion about these individuals is, is supported by you as a delegate. The election process requires some the nominations. So the nominating committee will determine the slate. The slate consists of two candidates for the national president-elect, four candidates for the national member at large, and two candidates for the Speaker of the House. The report of the nominating committee and this slate will be available by Sunday at 11 p.m. via the APHA site or the House of Delegates webpage. Nominations can be made from the floor, but they require a second and a majority vote. So some of the, excuse me, the, you would say something like this in order to nominate someone from the floor for the, for these ele this election process. Mr. Speaker, Lauren Kirk, East Tennessee State University. I would like to nominate Lucienne West for the Office of National President-Elect. Again, that process for that nomination requires a second from a delegate 
and a majority vote from the entire House in order to put that individual on the slate. The voting process. This gets a little dicey simply because you have the individuals that you have different positions. Um, the voting process for the president-elect and the Speaker of the House will be different than that of the members at large. So on this slide, we'll address the president-elect and the Speaker of the House. A majority of vote, a majority vote is required for election. No candidate should no candidate receive a majority on the first ballot. The name of the candidate with the least number of votes will, on the first ballot shall be omitted on the second ballot. So the same procedure will happen for the second ballot. Should no candidate receive a majority on the third ballot, the election will be decided by a plurality vote. And in a case of a tie in the plurality vote, the ABJ ASP Speaker of the House will cast the deciding vote. Oftentimes, this is called the rounds of voting. And, um, and oftentimes, there for these uh, offices, multiple rounds of voting are required in order to elect individuals. For the voting process for the national members at large, this can be an extensive process, but it's a similar pre procedure uh, to the president-elect and the Speaker of the House, except that you're electing two positions. So a majority of votes shall be required for the election, just as in the president-elect and the national Speaker of the House. If no two candidates receive a majority vote on the first ballot, the following procedures will, fo will follow. If one candidate has received a majority, that candidate shall be declared elected. The names of the candidates who were not elected on the first ballot shall remain on the second ballot. Except, except as stipulated below. The name of the candidate with the least number of votes, or in the, in the case of a tie, the names of the candidates tied with the least number of votes on the first ballot shall be omitted from the second ballot. However, if dropping the lowest vote, vote recipient would result in the remaining candidates being elected by default, the lowest vote recipient would not be dropped. The same procedure shall be followed for the third ballot if it's required. If voting on a third ballot does not result in the election of the required number of APHA ASB members at large, the election shall be decided by plurality vote. And in the case of a tie, once again, the APHA ASB Speaker of the House shall cast the deciding vote. So we just went through all of that information pretty quickly. And that, that last slide was particularly cumbersome. So we'll work our way through a few elections here where we'll invite the uh, National Executive Committee to join us in order to, um, to simulate the mock national elections. So we will now move, move on to the APHA ASP national officer elections. The House is prepared to receive the report of the nominating committee for the office of 2015-2016 APHA ASC National President-Elect. Mr. Speaker. Nominating chair. Mr. Speaker, the nominating committee has slated the following two individuals for the office of APHA ASP National President-Elect, Brian Donahue and Lucianne West. The House has heard the report of the APHA ASB Nominating Committee for the position of 2015-2016 APHA ASB National President-Elect. Because the slate came from a committee, there is no second required. Nominations from the floor can be taken if the candidate has complied with all of the requirements outlined in the APHA ASB House of Delegates Rules of Procedure. That being said, are there any nominations from the floor for the Office of APHA ASB National President-Elect? Microphone number two. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Sarah Reed from Palm Beach Atlantic University. I would like to nominate Nick Capote for the office of APHA ASP National President-Elect. Mr. Capote, do you accept the nomination for APHA ASP President-Elect? I accept, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Capote has accepted the nomination for the office of National President-Elect. Is there a second? Again. We will now place Mr. Capote on the ballot for the for the office of National President Elect. All fa all of, all those in favor of placing Mr. Capote on the ballot, please signify by saying aye. 
Aye. Aye. Aye. All those opposed, signify by saying nay. Nay. The ayes have it. Mr. Capote will now be a candidate for the office of national president-elect. Are there any further nominations? Microphone number three. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Dylan Jones from the University of Arkansas for Medical Sciences, and I would like to nominate Maggie Ozer for the Office of National President-Elect. Ms. Ozer, do you accept the nomination for the National President-Elect? I accept, Mr. Speaker. Ms. Ozer has accepted the nomination for Office of National President-Elect. Is there a second? Second. Second. We will now vote to place Ms. Ozer on the ballot for the Office of National President-Elect. All those in favor of placing Ms. Ozer on the ballot, please signify by saying aye. Aye. All those opposed, please signify by saying nay. 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 The nays have it. Ms. Ozer will not be placed on the ballot for, as, as candidate for the national Office of National President-Elect. Are there any further nominations? Seeing none, nominations for the Office of National President-Elect are closed. Each candidate may address the delegates for a period of time not to exceed four minutes. Candidates will address the House in, or in the following order. First, those slated by the nominating committee in alphabetical order, followed by the, the, nom by the nominations from the floor in the order in which they were nominated. Candidates for the APHA ASB National President-Elect, Brian Donahue, Lucianne West, Nicholas Capote, and the candidates will address the House in the order above. After all the candidates have a chance to speak, I will now grant a five-minute caucus to discuss the candidates. Five minutes later, will the House please come to order? It is time to vote for the Office of National President-Elect. Remember, delegates, please submit your electronic ballot by entering only one of the uh, number on the electronic keypad that corresponds to the candidate listed on your screen. Number one, Don Brian Donahue. Number two, Lucianne West. And number three, Nicholas Capote. At this time, we will be conducting a poll for you all to elect, excuse me, to Populate your favorite NEC member that's on this list tonight. So we encourage you to use that poll there. Which one is your favorite National Executive Committee member? And we'll have five more seconds for the vote here. Who is your favorite National Executive Committee member? And we'll close the poll. Keep what our results look like. I'm assuming that meant close the poll here, so I'll close it and share it here. All right, it looks like your favorite NEC member for National President-Elect is Nick Capote. Uh, followed by Lucy West, and bringing up the rear is Brian Donahue with 30%, um, though it's very, very close. And just to let everybody know, we only had 75% of uh, people out there voting. Um, now, it sounds a little bit like Lauren is having technical difficulties. Um, Lauren, can you hear us at all? I can hear you all. Can you all hear me? All right. So we're going to move forward here. Um, while he gets his telephone reset. Um, so we just kind of went through the mock um, House, of, uh, House of Delegates for both the proposed resolutions as well as the elections. Um, and as you see, it, it is quite a cumbersome process um, as we kind of go through and, and make sure that everything is completed um, throughout the entire um, time that we're in the House of Delegates. It can be quite an overwhelming um, Uh, the House and all of our rules and all of our procedures and stuff. So um, we try to do the best we can to make sure that you're fully educated uh, about all the processes that kind of go on. But if you guys do have some questions, 
Uh, we do have some time as we move forward here um, within the uh, webinar. We've got some time left um, to answer those questions that you may have. Um, no questions are stupid questions, um, but as we kind of move forward, um, please let us know uh, what we can do. So, um, sounds like we can hear Lauren again. Lauren, why don't you jump back in? I'm back. And I'll Great, thank on you. Sprint this time. All right. What questions do we have? One of the questions that had come up earlier is who serves on the nominating committee. And um, I cut and pasted it directly from our um, rules of procedure that shows how it's appointed. But um, each, uh, each year during the January Business Meeting, the National Executive Committee takes a look at um, those student pharmacists who have been um, actively involved uh, within APAJ ASP. We try to make sure that there's a mix of those students who have run for national office in the past, as well as those who have um, campaigned or run for regional office that, you know, have an idea of what it's like to run, um, but we select one student representative from each of the eight regions. Uh, we select a chair of the um, committee, um, as well as the ex officio chair is um, the APJ ASP national president from last year, so it'll be Brandy Hamilton. Uh, she'll serve as ex officio, um, and I believe Sarah Durr is our nominating committee chair. Um, but uh, that looks like it's it from the questions from our end. Uh, we don't have any hands raised here. Lauren, so why don't you zip through our last minute dates and deadlines and we'll close the webinar. So as Keith mentioned there, we have a few last minute dates and deadlines here uh, and offer an opportunity for you all to review these as well as ask questions about them. So we have the APHA ASP policy postcard challenge that's quickly coming to a close. So send your final postcard to your legislators and representatives and make sure we have some accurate numbers submitted on March 15th. The, uh, the chapter delegate registration, which is what we've been talking about all night tonight, that registration again will be due on March 20th. The APHA ASC Back the Pack campaign is uh, well underway and we have quite a few chapters involved. We want to make sure that all of those get credit for being involved and so we can determine our winner. All that information will be due March 20th. The APHA Political Leadership Reception. This is an annual event that's held at the in San Diego or at APHA annual meeting where we invite all the student pharmacists, pharmacists, and all of those uh, leaders that have been involved with the Political Action Committee or in, in any way advocating to come together at, for this reception and we really celebrate the year's achievements as well as our the forward steps that we've made uh, within the Political Action Committee. So I encourage you all to look at the schedule and make sure it fits into your schedule. And that is also a ticketed event, but we have the student, the discount student price at $15. So it's certainly a, uh, an opportunity for you to slide in there with your fellow student pharmacists as well as get to meet a few of uh, the other politically active pharmacists in our, in our midst. This is where we will also be announcing the winners of the Back of the Pack campaign, and those top five chapters will be highlighted and have the ability to, to showcase all of their, the work that they had done throughout the Back of the Pack campaign. As we mentioned, the ABHA new business items will be due March 28th at 8.30 a.m. And at this point, a few more topics there are the annual meeting sessions as well as, as, well as preparing for ABHA 2015. Uh, a few questions have been brought forth uh, about the APHA Institute on Alcoholism and Drug Dependencies. So any more questions that you all have can be submitted at this time. And I provide my contact information there to you all as delegates uh, to reach out for that question that you may not be able to ask or uh, was thought of once you reviewed the APHA House of Delegates website. Again, I encourage you to contact me if you have any questions. I will respond to that or send you to your regional delegate. Either way, we will be able to answer your question in a timely manner to make sure the APHA ASP House of Delegates process for you goes smoothly. So with those topics as, bit, uh, as little sparks and reminders for you, what questions do we have? So we have a 
question about the APHA Institute. And so is there an official way to designate another person to submit the rank list for the APHA Institute? Um, we actually allow the schools and colleges of pharmacy um, to choose whomever they would like to um, serve as their person who is submitting their ranked list, um, whether it be the dean, whether it be a chapter advisor, whether it be your chapter president. Um, you know what's best for your school, and you know the culture at your school. Um, so we pretty much allow anybody to um, fill that form out there. Um, but we will be, um, I'm, I have to go through and I have to update um, the, the dates and deadlines real quick um, of submitting the ranked list for that. Um, I'm going to give people a little bit more time, uh, as well as make sure that we have everything set up from a registration standpoint. So um, stay tuned uh, over the next couple of days for that. But we are still planning to have the Institute uh, June 5th through the 8th. We have um, spots for about 275 student pharmacists, uh, as well as about 100 um, or so pharmacist attendees. So I'm very excited about that. Doesn't look like there's any other questions, Lauren, or nobody else has their hands raised. So why don't you close it? Well, delegates, you have completed the orientation, and I am happy to say that all of the information that you'll ever need to be an APHA ASC Council Delegate has been presented to you tonight. I want to thank the Policy Standing Committee for joining us, as well as the National Executive Committee for joining us and helping us with the mock, um, the mock scripts as we went through the proposed resolutions and the election. Um, as, so with that, uh, we'll sign off for the night and, again, encourage you to look at those resources that we have set out for you as delegates and contact me or any APHA staff, your regional officers, or anyone to make sure that you are able to, to get everything out of the APHA ASP House Delegates experience that you're looking for. So with that, we'll sign off and see you in San Diego.